So this is a short video I made by cutting together a presentation that I've made with Prezi using ScreenFlow to record my screen. And I also later will see one I did with um, Keynote on an Apple using ScreenFlow to record the screen and another where I use the Keynote presentation on an iPad. So with Prezi you can see how I could lay out basically a single large graphic imitating the pages strewn across the tabletop and I can just zoom right in into one particular part and as I move to another point of view, Prezi handles any rotation of the uh, uh, image and you can zoom in and out. It's uh, very fluid and this is an enormous graphic and Prezi is handling it very easily. Notice how ScreenFlow records the cursor so that you can point at things and, and move around and, and uh, if you watch the original presentation, which is linked to on this site, you'll be able to uh, hear what I was talking about there. But notice how this that sort of zoom in, zoom out nature of Prezi is one of the things that gives it the movement that makes it engaging. And you can, once you get to a page, you can zoom in on a small detail. And Prezi, you can zoom in to a crazy amount. You can zoom in to something that looks like a dot, and it turns out to be an entire map of Europe. Um, here we see, again, that sort of dynamic, just moving it around outside of the pre-programmed point of view. I can go right into a point, talk about it, and give the presentation a very dynamic kind of ad hoc sort of feel. There I am just kind of panning it down with my fingers. Uh, and again, you get that feeling that I'm, you know, sort of just moving the paper around um, with my hands, which I think gives it an organic feel. And there I hit the space bar and we went to a new point of view. And you can kind of tell because things rotated as it, as it hit that new point of view. Uh, so Prezi keeps it simple. It's a very interesting and very powerful program. I've used it a few times, but I have gravitated toward Keynote um, because I find Keynote lets me do, lets me create animations on a slide uh, using uh, various transitions, mostly the Magic Move transition. Here's an example of Magic Move. I take a whole bunch of sheets of paper. The next slide has them spread out. Magic Move just takes care of what happens in between. It spreads them out. So here I have, with the keynote style presentation, I'm sort of presenting the idea that I've spread out the paper, now I'm selecting one, and I've used ScreenFlow to record it, but this time I set the cursor to be, instead of an arrow, um, in, in ScreenFlow, after the fact, you can change what the cursor looks like. So uh, here I chose to make it a dark circle. I made it transparent. And then I, I find it um, less harsh, I guess. Uh, I, uh, the original pointer was kind of small. If you make it big, it's, it's big and black. So if it's over something, you can't see what's underneath it. This way, even if I've you know, carelessly placed the pointer on top of exactly what I want to talk about, you can still see through the pointer and I haven't totally obscured it. So I found that very useful. Um, we can still do the, the zoom. Here we, we're just sort of zooming up the page. Um, you'll notice that uh, Keynote is a little more resource intensive, or at least Prezi had ability to move and zoom much more smoothly than Keynote does on my 10-year-old computer. Uh, you might have noticed a little jitter there, but it's still, it's doing great. It's doing well. Um, I had to make sure, though, that uh, I presented each of these pages one at a time. Um, uh, Keynote just couldn't handle zooming in on the entire graphic. That background is a big image, and if it was resizing that, it really choked. Um, I suppose if I had a more modern computer, that wouldn't be a problem. Um, but uh, I do cast judgment on Keynote for its resource uh, uses. Now, um, here I'm going to zoom in on the, uh, the spectra there uh, in the center. You can see me moving the cursor around, talking about stuff, and now we can, we can zoom in. And that's another magic move. I just you know, copied the image made the image bigger on the next slide, magic move took care of it. You may also notice that the image rotated a little. I resized it, changed its angle, and magic move just took care of both uh, changes simultaneously. Um, here I slid it and rotated it a bit, kind of just give you that feel as if I had slid it up. Keynote doesn't let you resize the image dynamically while you're playing the slideshow. You have to sort of plan what your points of view are going to be ahead of time. There's no ad hoc, no, oh, I'm going to go off and look at this. Uh, but uh, so it has that limitation. Prezi, you can do, you can kind of be very a la carte or very uh, ad hoc. Uh, with Keynote, you have to plan. But with planning, you can make it feel very much like you're just taking it aside or going here or pointing that out. And you can certainly give it that casual feel, but you do have to plan it in advance. Um, here we're just shrinking back. Uh, and those are the kind of transitions that I mostly use in my Keynote presentations, just magic move, resize elements, um, and if they're, you know, appear on the next slide, they'll just fade in. If they take them off the next slide, they'll fade out. There I slid something in from off of frame. It was waiting off of frame on the previous slide. And when uh, I went to the new slide, I just put it in the center of the new slide and it just handled sliding everything from off of frame to on frame. 
and on frame to off of frame. Uh, here's an example of that sort of move around um, uh, with magic move. So very, very powerful um, uh, way. And, and look at this, the way I've sort of taken all the elements and I've sort of set it up as if I was sliding things around. This is sort of the end of my presentation that I made with Keynote and I'm uh, sort of giving an overview and I want to sort of show multiple pages. Um, and I can do that, and I can do it very easily with Magic Move, where I just have to take this image and then take the next image where I've moved some pages around, and then just when the transition happens, the pages will just move to where they have to go. Now, Keynote on the iPad is actually smoother than Keynote on my uh, computer when you're playing it. So I made the presentation on my computer, and then I transferred it over to the iPad, and uh, you can see the transitions are much smooth, smoother. And the touching the screen on uh, on the iPad using the screen recording function of the iPad, I can you know do a little laser pointer thing. I could uh, I could be drawing circles and drawing lines, and you can have like a uh, more of a chalkboard type experience. Um, and uh, this is being recorded on the iPad, and then I just transferred it over to iMovie on my Mac and and. Uh, quickly trimmed it up and boom, there you go. So I found uh, this is the way I'd love to do things. I'd love to do things all the time this way in the future. Make my uh, presentations on the computer and then just transfer it over to the iPad and, and sit on the couch with an iPad and off I go.